Prices for Tesla, GM, Fisker and all other electric cars are all just about to change in a big way and since it's the US government that's forcing the change, things are probably going to get really messy for you, the consumers and the car brands. The host of the State of Charge YouTube channel, Tom Malogny, will be here to help me unpack and explain what's in the revamped bill and what it all means for your next EV purchase. And we're going to start right now. Ooh, welcome to E4 Electric, where we expose the truth behind the electric car headlines. So don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything moving forward. Did you know it was possible to keep a secret in Washington? Yeah, me neither. But apparently the outgoing... Yes, I said it. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer and let's say Democratic... Why not? Senator Joe Manchin had one for all of us, especially the future electric car buyers, or as I call them, people. So remember the $7,500 EV tax credit, which has been around for a while? As a matter of fact, it's been around for so long that some of the EV makers like Tesla, GM, and soon Nissan and Toyota have run out of it after selling 200,000 EVs here in the US. Well, the talks about revamping and renewing it have been going on for a while. As a matter of fact, one of the biggest advocates and co-authors of a couple of those extension bills Congressman Peter Welch has been my guest on this channel not once but twice to push it forward. Last conversation we had about two years ago when you proposed your bill, that didn't make it. I don't know, something about not, not being in power or something like that. But now it seems like it's much uh, much better environment. Do you think this, this bill has a good chance? And do you have some sort of a timeline when do you think we, this, can be, this can be implemented? Well, I do have, I do believe it has a good chance because, as you know, uh, President Biden has made it a central part of his agenda to aggressively uh, and comprehensively attack climate change. Now, that last one was actually more than a year ago, which you could probably tell since I had less hair. Thank you, Bosley. But every single attempt to pass any legislature since then that had any EV tax credit extension has failed, the last one being President Biden's Build Back Better bill, that is not hard to say at all, that was held hostage by a couple of Democratic senators from conservative states. But this week, oh the miracle. Apparently Schumer and Manchin had a wonderful date and have struck a deal which will bring the $7,500 tax credit back, but things get really iffy and pretty unfair to some automakers and consumers once you start breaking it down. Oh, and it's no longer called Build Back Better, because apparently we can't, and its new name is the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022, because Americans like to buy into their legislation pretty much in the same way as they like to buy into a bag of chips at a gas station store with clever packaging. So let's unpack this pile of unhealthy congressional calories and we will start with the good news because it will take less time and I will let President Biden himself give it a running start. It also gives consumers a tax credit to buy any electric vehicle or fuel cell vehicle, new or used, and a tax credit for up to $7,500 if those vehicles were made in America. Okay. Well, he's not not exaggerating, but let me help. First, the tax credit is back and every automaker is eligible. There is no cap on cars produced and this credit will be in effect for 10 years. That's a long time. I'll be like... 39 by then. Secondly, this tax credit is instant, so more like a point of sale rebate, regardless of how much you've paid in federal taxes, which of course does no longer make it a tax credit, but let's not have facts get on the way of the point. And by the way, I always thought that if you don't make enough money to pay $7,500 in taxes, maybe you shouldn't be 
you know, buying a Tesla. And thirdly, and this is a big one, you will get up to $4,000 tax credit if you're buying a used electric vehicle. Very cool, right? Well, well here's the thing. All of these awesome perks actually come with some really strict limits, which will nullify a lot of these to the point you may actually miss the existing tax credit rules. I will tell you what all of these big limitations are, but before that, a quick reminder that this video is brought to you by Electrify America, the largest public fast charging network in the US that provides the freedom for all EV drivers to go where they need to go, including coast to coast. Electrify America has ultra fast chargers at speeds of up to 350 kilowatts for capable vehicles. Download their app to find hundreds of locations and sign up for their Pass Plus membership for discounted charging sessions. Get started using the link in the description of this video. So let's talk about how this bill, if passed, will actually make you pay more for some of the electric cars next year than you would have paid for them this year. First, the credit is only available for EVs that are assembled in the United States. This not only disqualifies a lot of good EVs, but can actually drive some of the smaller startups that chose to make their EVs somewhere else, like Fisker, completely out of business. If passed and signed, this bill goes in effect on January 1st, and this is just not enough time for any car maker, big or small, to move their manufacturing into the US. Apparently, the only thing that has a chance to be moved into the United States before January 1st is monkeypox. But even if you do build your EVs in the United States, that's still not enough you get half of the tax credit removed if the EV has less than 40% of its battery crucial minerals from the US or countries with a free trade agreement with the US, and you lose the other half of the credit unless at least 50% of the battery components come from the US or countries with a free trade agreement with the US. And on top of that, these mineral and component percentage requirements increase every year for the next few years. Then there is ever dreaded cap on the price. The MSRP of the vehicle must be under $80,000 or less for SUVs, vans, and trucks, and $55,000 for all other vehicles. Now, of course, MSRP stands for the manufacturer's suggested retail price, which we have recently found out doesn't mean doodles. I mean, let's face it, suggestions don't mean anything anymore. For example, Amazon suggests that when I buy a Love Actually DVD, I should also buy a box of Kleenex. It is a touchy movie, but what I really need is a DVD player. So, for example, because of the price cap, Tesla will only have the Model 3 rear-wheel drive eligible for the tax credit due to the $55,000 limit. Now, it's possible that Tesla could drop the prices on other models to qualify for the credit, though I don't know if they would want to since they haven't had any issues selling any of their models despite repeatedly jacking up their prices every few months by thousands of dollars. But startups like Fisker and a few others may just be completely out of luck, which means they may either decide to opt out of selling in the United States altogether or possibly to face bankruptcy. And even if somehow the EV you want to buy passes all of these hurdles, you know who may still be the biggest hurdle of them all? You. You may actually disqualify you from ever getting any of this credit because now there is an income cap and it's not adjusted for your location, even though the places where EVs are the most purchased have much higher cost of living. So if you make more than $150,000 a year, or as we call it here in Silicon Valley, minimum wage, and I'm not even joking, or more than $300,000 per household, well, no soup for you. And for the used EVs, you can only claim a tax credit of 30% of the vehicle's value with a $4,000 cap. It cannot be a business and buyers may claim only one credit 
every three years. The used EVs must be at least two model years old at the time of sale, purchased at a dealer and cost $25,000 or less. Used EVs qualify for the tax credit only once per their lifetime and uh, there is a modified gross income cap of $75,000 per person or $150,000 for a household. So, yeah. Now, of course, I do have to say that if you are an American like me, this bill does do a good job of bringing manufacturing back, and it actually has some other good things in it, like minimum taxation on billion-dollar companies, which all car makers are, so they don't get away with paying less taxes than you and I. And of course, this bill still has to pass the Senate, which is not 100% done deal with other senators maybe possibly having other issues with it, especially Kirsten Sinema, who was the other holdout besides Joe Manchin to pass the Build Back Better bill. But this is by far the best and probably the last chance to update the EV tax credit in a while and probably in the next few years. So the big question is, would it be better to keep what we already have? Now, feel free to play a US senator in a comment section and by today's standards, that probably wouldn't be that much of a stretch. And let me know if you would vote for the new tax credit bill or would keep what we have right now. Meanwhile, for more, as always, I turn to the host of the State of Charge YouTube channel and a man who always has my vote, Tom Malogny. All right, Tom, so I know that this deal makes sense politically, especially for Democrats, but does, does this make sense for, you know, the people we care about, the electric car consumers, especially the ones buying an electric car in the next few years? Well, you know, it can, and it's going to help some people. It's going to hurt some people. It's, it's not what uh, I think most of the electric car community was hoping for. If you're a GM fan, it'll help you because they're going to potentially have some of their vehicles qualify for the new tax incentive. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to really look at this overall, Alex, and be happy with it. Now, I've recently uh, found out that um, life is not fair. And, and, and uh, it changed my life, honestly. And, and, and this is co probably one of the prime examples. Is this fair to some car manufacturers that already chose a certain path of manufacturing outside of the United States, especially the startups that can't just build another factory or use another factory in the US? Like Fisker, this could break them. So is it fair? I guess probably not. But as you said, you know, life isn't fair. Business isn't fair. Uh, I think if you were a smart and you were a Fisker or another manufacturer, I think you had to see this coming uh, a while ago and understand that when this tax credit eventually got rewritten, and we knew at some point it was going to be rewritten, it was going to really favor manufacturing in the U.S. I think we've seen that signaled for a long time now. So, you know, I don't think that they're really that surprised. And when I say they, I mean the manufacturers themselves, the startups and, and the legacy brands. I think they kind of imagined something like this was going to be the end result. So who who is going to benefit which which brands are going to benefit from this um i'm assuming tesla and gm probably would see one of the biggest changes from at least what the status quo is right now for them so yeah i don't know how much tesla is going to benefit from, from this you know on the surface the 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 standard range rear wheel drive model 3 would qualify based on price none of the other tesla vehicles would although tesla could lower their price to get them just under but even now, Tesla uses the LFP battery for that for that vehicle, and that is made in China, so that, so that would disqualify. Yeah, they could switch the battery manufacturing, I guess, and swap the battery out. But I don't know how much Tesla is going to really, uh, you know, benefit from this. And it seems like Tesla kind of doesn't care. They've been doing just well without the tax credits. GM is going to benefit enormously. You know, they they haven't had that benefit of the tax credit for a long time. Ford is about to enter their phase out period. Toyota is gonna to benefit too because Toyota hit their 200,000 limit 
just recently, and they're going to begin their phase out in the next quarter or so. And you know they do manufacture a lot of vehicles in the U.S., so they'll qualify with that. Uh, they'll be able to you know, hit the qualification on sourcing the minerals in the U.S. And, and battery components. So I think Toyota actually is going to be one of the companies that really benefit from this. Okay, so then would it be fair to say that this is actually going to help Tesla competitors unless would they go out of their way like they did in Germany to start, you know, lowering prices on maybe the Model Y and also doing another switcheroo with the battery and putting the Panasonic you know, uh, U.S. made batteries back into Model 3. Is it even worth it for them? You know, right now they're selling every car they could make at the price they're asking for. So it might not be worth it for them. But if things change, they can do what you're saying. They can switch the batteries. They can lower the, the, the cost just a little bit. But if you're Tesla, what, why are you going to do that at this point? They're selling their cars as fast as they can make them. But it does give them that extra level of security if sales start to slow up if demand wanes a little bit they can make a little adjustments and all of a sudden wow now all of a sudden the vehicles qualify for the new uh, tax credit call it the tax credit i don't know if it's going to be a, it's going to sounds like it's going to be a, a rebate like an instant uh, on the cash on the hood so i don't know if we'll even call it a tax credit anymore because it's kind of not no longer a tax credit if they go down this uh road now, uh, you know, let's once again be on the side of consumers. If you are buying an electric car in the next couple of years, which deal is better? Do you buy uh, now before the end of the year and use the existing uh, uh, tax credit? Or do you wait until the next year? Uh, which one is better for the consumer? Well, I guess it depends on which model you're going after. A lot of the vehicles that currently qualify for the tax credit will not qualify for the the incentives in 2023 once this starts and quite honestly i don't even know which vehicles are going to that, that that's one of the things i don't like about this new uh you know, legislation, it's really confusing to try to figure out, well, which vehicles are going to qualify. The average person would have no idea what the battery content is made of and what percentage of components, you know, even in many instances, which vehicles are made in North America because manufacturers make cars all over the world now. So, you know, I think that's going to be a problem. We're going to have to have some kind of a list made up somewhere where people can just quickly reference and know which vehicles qualify for this incentive. Because it, it's unlike now, the way it was that all the EVs would qualify unless your manufacturer was, you know, hit their limit already, Tesla and GM. But other than that, it's very easy. You know, you just had to look at the battery size. But with these, these new regulations, it, you really almost need a roadmap to figure out which vehicles are going to qualify and which ones won't. So, you know, I... You know, it's hard for me to say which is better. I think maybe the past tax credit or the current tax credit in many instances is better for some people than what the new legislation is going to be. But what I will say is the new proposed legislation it is probably better for less uh, lower income families because that was one of the big problems with the tax credit. You were, you were asked to put out the money up front and then you got it back in your taxes, but with the way it's structured now, you'll get it as a point of sale rebate. And that's gonna help some lower income families get into EVs that they couldn't have previously afforded. Now, one thing everyone can afford is to subscribe to Tom's channel. And I put a link to it in the description of this video. And check out the new YouTube feature, the super thanks button, where you can contribute to any channel. But in this case, for a small fee, you can provide food, shelter and clothing uh, to this youtuber all right looking forward to all of your comments other than that see you guys next time and remember to stay charged